Hello, Dave here. Welcome to Learn JavaScript with me. This is Chapter 11, Ajax 5. Uh, we're doing a little stock quote. Ajax, PHP, and PHP doing a curl. So we're going to an external uh, site to get the stock quote information. And it's a Google site. We'll see how that happens. And I'm just looping through five different companies here so that I would not have to uh, worry about recording this uh, during market hours. Otherwise, it would just be one and you would just see the, the price updating. But since the market's not open, the price isn't going to change. So I just went ahead and did five different companies. So this is what it looks like. We're going to look at the code that makes this happen. Uh, let me just stop that. I did that for every two seconds there. Uh, this showcase all of these exercises are available out at DaveCoast.com. If you have any questions or comments, please contact me, Dave, at DaveCoast.com. There's a learning JavaScript uh, on the nav bar that'll take you to js.davecoast.com, which is where we just, that's where this is, js.davecoast.com. And then we have, I have this post here. It has the link js.davecoast.com. It's got a link to Larry Ullman. That's the book I've been working through. The book here is <laughs> get the cover back up there. The book is Modern JavaScript, Develop and Design. It was written by Larry Ullman and that's why I have a link LarryUllman.com all of the code for all of these exercises is here. And if you continue reading, here is a playlist with all of the learning JavaScript with me videos. So let's dig right in. We're going to start by reviewing the code in the editor. I'm using Notepad++. And I have four files involved. And then once we do that, we're going to walk through it in Firebug to see how it actually operates. So the first file is the HTML. And all that's really critical here is this ID within the span here. And this is where we're going to, that's where this message goes that we've put together in the JavaScript and we send it to the page to be displayed. And down here are two JavaScript files, and that's these two here. Uh, one creating our Ajax object, and two our actual stock quote.js. So pretty simple on the HTML side of things. The actual create Ajax object JavaScript is our external named function and we call that from our stock quote here where we actually create our ajax object so we're calling this function and it creates a new xhr object for anything but older ie where it needs to be passed this string and it creates an ActiveX object. After this point, once we return Ajax work, everything behaves the same in our, so our variable Ajax object here, doesn't matter whether it's older IE or not, everything else uh, is equivalent. So that's our creating our object function. We keep that separate because we reuse it whenever we want to create an Ajax object, and that's the whole purpose of functions. So here's the meat of our JavaScript code, and we're talking JavaScript here. Notice that it says everything is executed within our onload anonymous function, so when the window is loaded, right, we create a Ajax object, we create an event listener for the on ready state change, which means 
Ajax did something. Anything happen in Ajax land? Oh, okay, come into this function. And this is pretty uh, common standard that we've done so far. This is basically saying, oh, is it done? Is the Ajax operation complete? Oh, it is. Was it successful? With these status codes, if it was successful, do our successful activities with it. And what we're doing for this specific case is we're getting a response and we're using the JSON and that's JavaScript object notation parse method to take the response and place it in an actual JavaScript object. And I'm just calling it data work. And then I'm creating another object here that is the reference to quote message ID. And that's out on our HTML. This is where we're going to stick our message. So we're referencing this part of the page. Now let's get back to the code here. Then we go ahead and uh, concatenate a message together, right? Just the current price for, oh, here we go. We're using the dot name. And we'll see this a little clearer in Firebug where we can see all of the available properties. But we have the company name here. And this is just the notation to get to it. Because data work here, this is still an array. Even though there's only one uh, value within that array that we wish to use, you know, the index zero value of the array, even though there's only one, it's still an array, and we still have to index it. And then we can use its object properties. And we're going to use name, which is the company name. And this is an L, not a 1. And that stands for the last price. So in the US, we generally think of stock prices high, low, last change. How much was changed? So anyway, so the last is the last known price for that stock. And that's the value that we're showing here. And we'll see some of the other properties, but these are two easy, obvious ones to utilize. We're just concatenating that in a message. And depending on what type of browser we have, whether it's a modern browser or older Internet Explorer browser, we're using either text content or inner text to place that message actually on the page. Notice that it's using output work here. We just saw output work is our reference to the actual page. So that's what happens whenever an AJAX operation is complete. Otherwise, right, we go ahead and do our setup things. So I'm basically just creating a, uh, for first time through before we go into the loop. I'm setting a ticker value. So just hard coding Apple in here. And that's going to be the first quote that shows up. Then setting up the URL because we're using the get method for our Ajax process. I need to pass it as part of the URL after the question mark. And so I put the URL together with the question mark and go ahead and concatenate the ticker symbol. So right now it will be Apple. And again, we'll see this a little clearer when we, when we, when we fire bug it. But bear with me. So now we prepare our request. We go ahead and do our setup, which is the open method, saying we're going, we want to do a get Ajax request. Here is the URL containing our parameter, and we want it to be asynchronous by this true value. So that's our setup, and now we actually execute it using the send method, and we pass null in this argument. This argument is only used when type is equal to post. Type is equal to get. So the data goes here. If it was post, the data would go in here where null is. And 
Again, just because I'm doing this when the market is not open, I'm creating a silly little array to buzz through these five quotes just so that you can see that this is happening in the background when we actually look at the page. So if the market was open, you would see the price changing uh, for whatever the interval is. And I set the interval for a quick two seconds because we're in a video here. You don't want to wait a minute in between seeing each type of thing. Um, so just creating an array with five different quotes could have been 25. You know, number didn't matter. I just picked five common uh, uh, ticker symbols. And then I'm creating this interval here with an anonymous function. And in here, this interval, it is set for every two seconds. Again, could be anything. I just try to make it useful for the sake of doing a video. So during this interval, it is going to set this ticker symbol to a value in the array based on the counter and go ahead and do the setup, right, for the URL, issue the setup AJAX, and then actually execute the AJAX or XHR request. Then just work our counter. So if the counter is greater than or equal to four, right, I only have five items in here. So if my counter is greater than four, right, it's zero. This is zero, one, two, three, four. So if I've already used four, then I set counter back to zero. Otherwise, I just increment the counter. Straightforward. And that's our JavaScript code. Let's take a look at the PHP code. Here's the PHP code. Since I want the data to be returned in JSON format, I have to use the header. It has to be the first line in the PHP script. Then I verify that I got a value. And notice that I call it ticker symbol for the associative array. And that's because here, when I do my key value pair, right, it's ticker symbol equal. That ticker, this ticker symbol is the index to the array. And that's why I use it again down here, setting it up. And the variable part is the other side of the equal sign here. So here, my get array has an index by ticker symbol. And if I if it is set, then go ahead and set the variable ticker symbol to that value. Otherwise, I just hard code it to F, which is Ford Motor Company, and just did that so I would see it if there was some kind of a problem with the value getting to the program. Then I go ahead and set up the curl. And notice that this is very similar to our... Ajax set up here, same basic type of thing, right? Our Ajax open and our Ajax send, very similar with our curl init and our curl execute. So this curl init and our setup options, same kind of concept. It's prep for our curl call, our call through curl, which stands for client URL, and it's a way to securely call uh, pages outside our domain, which you cannot do, and it makes sense, right, for security purposes uh, within the JavaScript. So we use curl to do a nice, safe call. We set it up, and so here we're setting up this string and it's basically the same type of thing, only we're changing this, right, ampersand, ampersand in between the value pairs, the Q equal. So that's whatever our quote request is, right? Info type is info quote all. So that's what we're asking for there. And Q is equal to, well, this is the ticker symbol that we passed in, which will be one of these five symbols, and the first time through, 
it is going to be apple. So we set up our, our init string. We create our curl object with curl init. And again, we're in a JavaScript <laughs> program, so not a, not a PHP video, so not getting too detailed here. But the concept is very similar to our Ajax object. So we set up and open up our, our curl world with this string. Then we do our setup, which is or set options. It's not set up, but we set various options. So what option do we want to use? Well, we're using the curl return transfer. And that basically says, and this is true or false here, but we're basically saying whatever you get back, I want you to return it as a string to the calling program. Then I can go ahead and execute it, close it, right? So uh, create it, uh, set whatever options I wish, actually execute it, and then close it because I'm done with it. Release those resources. And then this print substring returns that value to the JavaScript, and that returns to our JavaScript as this response text here. And it is available, and that's why we're waiting for it to be complete and successful. So if our AJAX request is complete and successful, our response text is going to be this substring of result work after the third position and that reason is because there's a space and a slash slash to begin. And we're going to see what that actually looks like right now in Firebug. We'll go ahead and start. Let's just blop back to our overall showcase here. That's where we are here. And you'll see here's all of our exercises. I'm going to shortcut it over. Well, I guess I could have done it down there. Chapter 11. Here's our current example. And notice it started out with Apple. Then goes to Walt Disney, Google, IBM, Microsoft, and back to Apple. And we see that popping around. So this is our message ID area where we're sending our response back. So now that it's zipping through and getting nice and irritating. Let's go ahead and turn on Firebug. And I'm going to go ahead and reload and bring up my stack quote. Uh, here's our JavaScript. Let's go ahead and get these breakpoints set so we can stop this thing. Notice it's just cranking through all these gets. We're going to look at those in a second. But let me let me stop the bleeding here. So there's the first executable statement from window onload. Here's the first executable statement in our ready state change listener. And here's our first executable statement inside our uh, interval uh, timer loop down at the bottom. So now if I go ahead and refresh the page, it stops at that breakpoint. Okay, so now it's not doing anything here. We don't have anything out on the screen. And we're at this breakpoint. So let's walk, walk through step by step through the code here. First thing we do is we go ahead and create our Ajax object. And this is going to bop into our other uh, our other JavaScript there. So if I hit step, we go into this, right? Create Ajax object. And it basically creates the object for all browsers except older IE that use ActiveX object. Straightforward. I'm going to go ahead and bop through this code. We went ahead. I'm in Firefox. So it created the objects. Notice that there's our XML HTTP request object. And let's return that to our calling program. 
So I step again, and we're back. And if I look at Ajax object here, notice that, well, that's what it did. It created that object, and now I have it. So now I go ahead and turn on a listener. I hit step. So that listener is now active. Our on ready state change. So whenever we have an Ajax activity, we'll go through there, see if we need to do something. So we created this ticker symbol, which ticker symbol to get. And I just said, go ahead and set it for Apple. Let's go ahead and set up this stock quote URL. And there's our URL. And there's the question mark and our parameter that we're going to pass. And that's what becomes the get part. And that next uh, statement was actually doing the, notice that ready state is equal to one. We're just doing the prep right now. So that was the Ajax object open. So we're going to skip out of here. Nothing to do in there, but our listener is working. Right? And we're just doing our Ajax open. We're doing get. That's our method. Our stock quote URL. There's our URL. Right? Here's our value, stock quote URL. If you want to look at it over there, I find it easier just to hover. And you can see what's, what's in that variable. And we're passing it true to go ahead and perform this Ajax request asynchronously. Go ahead and hit step. Now we're about to actually, so we've done our setup, and now we're about to actually execute our Ajax request. I step through there, and now ready state is equal to four, because it is done, then we're ready to do some work. But notice that what was created here, we have our first XHR uh, request in the console. If I come over to the net option here, and under XHR, right, it's almost buried in the lost here, but under XHR, here's that get request, and here's our parameters. Notice that my parameter is ticker symbol AAPL, right? So if we go back to our script here, oh, well, that looks awfully familiar there, so it looks like things are working. So go back. Here's our parameters. Here's our headers. This is what we're, we're asking it to do. And here's our actual response. And this is important. So notice that. Here's our response. And here it is, a little better formatted JSON land. And notice that we have these values here. And in the script, remember, we're using the dot name and the dot L for last uh, values. So if I go back here to the JSON object, Right, and we find the L, which is the last. It's 58 point or 585.28, but there's a value there. And down here is the name, and it's Apple Inc. Right, and here's a bunch of other things you can probably get an idea. Right, the 52 week high, the 52 week low. Right, some things are obvious, some things are not. Um, but anyway, here's our here's our return information. Here's the, uh, the raw information, and this is what we're parsing. But this basically, JSON parse turns it into the object like that. So let's go back to our script here. So now we're ready to do all of that work and get that data into our JavaScript for useful activity. So step, ready state is equal to 4. Look at that, the status, 200, successful. So that's good. So we will go ahead and, since everything is good up there, or we pass that if condition, we're going to go ahead and do uh, the JSON parse of that. There's our response text. See how that is all set up in there. We're going to use JSON parse to make that a useful JavaScript object. So I hit step. Now if I look at data work here, oh, look at that. It's an object. It's all green. So if we look at data work here, here's that object. Here's that zero. I mean, basically, looks similar. But here is all the properties. 
that we have available to us. Here's the name property, Apple Inc. And here's the L property for last 585.28. So, so we got our value back. And now we're going to uh, start by creating our reference to the screen. We go ahead and output work is now a reference to that uh, quote message ID out on the screen. Our variable message work is next. So we go ahead and put some values in there. You'll see that message work is equal to current price for Apple Inc. is 585.28. Well, that's these two values. And you see why I use data work zero. Because over here, it's data work zero. There's only one here. There's only a zero. I mean, there could be other index values. But there's only one, and it's zero. So data work zero dot name dot name is Apple Inc. Dot L is the 585.28. And that's our one of the beauties of object-oriented fun land. So we go ahead and place this out on the screen and right. I'll put text contact if it's undefined, but it's not undefined. Move the value there, and voila, we should be able to look out here, and current price for Apple Inc. is 585.28. Let's uh, keep stepping here. We'll go through and do uh, another one, right? See, so it just popped in there, and it's popping again and again. And it's not stopping here because I need to go ahead and stop my session. Let me go ahead and turn off Firebug for a moment. And I'm going to close that. Open it back up again. Let's go to our Java JS. DaveCoast.com, and I think it's just with it having that Ajax object open in debugger, right? So it's bopping through there. If I turn on Firebug, reload to see all those sources, it stops again at our breakpoint. Sorry about that. Kind of like need to clear things out. But let me go ahead and I'm going to just hit continue here as opposed to going through each line. And then it hits this uh, breakpoint here when it's setting up the Ajax request. I'm going to hit continue again. It went ahead and, and now this is where we just were and just walk through this uh, response, right? Here's our a Apple response. And I'll hit continue one more time here. And now it went ahead and broke in here, why it doesn't do that, I, I just think it's a, a, fire bu a bug in Firebug, but I haven't investigated why. I had to basically shut it down, open it back up again, as you saw. But now we can see that we're in the interval here. It's bopping around, and now we're going to go ahead, since our counter work is equal to zero, I'm going to step, and now we're... Now we're going to go after Disney, right? Because that's index zero here. I'm going to step again. We're going to do our Ajax request. Our Ajax request, right? Our ready state is one because we're just setting up. So we're not going to do anything. Step, step. Now we're set up. Here's our quote requesting the Disney stock. And we're ready to execute the Ajax request. Let's go ahead and execute it. Here's our on ready state equal to four. Let's go ahead and step, 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 step. And now we got data work here. And if we look at data work and zero, you'll see that name is equal to the Walt Disney Company. And our last price was 4966. I'll hit step and we'll grab the name. 
right? We're still doing the, the same type of stuff. And let's go ahead and put that out to the screen. I'll hit step, step. It's out to the screen now. And it's cranking along and moving. I'm going to turn this off because it just keeps on going because of that interval. But that is what we're doing. Let me turn off Firebug. And it's showing Microsoft out there. I'm just going to get that off of the screen. Let's bring our code up here for a second for a final review. And again, here's that code that just creates the object. But here's our, our code in here, and it's just going to keep on going forever within this interval of every two seconds creating those gets. And you can see uh, at least the action happening because the market is closed and we can't see the actual prices. So once again, uh, we demonstrate making a request to an external domain for information. So the PHP script had to use curl to safely call the outside world. And we're calling this domain here, which is a different domain that provides financial information. Um, our JavaScript asks PHP via the get method. So here in our setups, we use the get method and we ask it to return that stock quote information in JSON format or a string. So when we're actually doing this request here, we are using this curl option return transfer that says return it as a string so I can parse that out into the JSON format. And after we parse that out, we can go ahead and utilize it. And that's up here, right? Because this is what comes back, the response text. After we parse it out, we can use this data work to retrieve the properties we are interested in. And once we have these properties, we basically hello world them and just put them out at the screen just to see that we have them out there. And we end up with something like Apple at 5825, the Walt Disney Company, Google, International Business Machines, Microsoft Corporation. So this is Dave at DaveCoast.com. Thank you very much for watching. Questions or comments, please let me know. Dave at DaveCoast.com or leave a comment on the video. Thank you.